Thank you, Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them a parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to the father, Father, give me the share of the property that belongs to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his prop property on dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout the country. And he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating. And no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough to it bread enough and to spare, but here I am, dying of hunger. I'll get up and I'll go to my father. And I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arm around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and before you. I'm not worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on it. Put a ring on its finger and sandals on its feet. And get the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his eldest son was in the field. When he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked, what was going on? He replied, your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf, because he got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry, and he refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, listen. For all these years, I've been working like a slave for you. I've never disobeyed your command. Yet you've never given me even a young goat so I might celebrate with my friends. But with this son of yours come back, you have devoured your prophet, who has devoured your property with prostitutes. You killed a fat of calf for him. And the father said to him, Son, you are always with me. And all that is mine is yours. But we have to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to come into your presence, to look upon your word. Fill us with your word from pulpit to pew so that we can go forth to do your work and your will so that you may get the glory. To Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Good morning again, St. Philip. Good morning. We all know this story. We hear it, we've heard it time and time again. Tonight, well, it's not night now, is it? Let's try it again. Today, we're going to take a slightly different approach. He said, now the tax collectors and the sinners were with Jesus and they were listening to him. All right? So we have the tax collectors, we have Jesus. And then we have the ministers, the preachers, the Pharisees. And they were grumbling and they were going, this guy can't be but so holy because look who he's dealing with. Look who he's spending time with. Look who he's eating with. And that's when we get to this story. So as we go through this story today, let's look at it from a whole different perspective based on the three uh, groups that we're talking about. We're talking about the sinners, the tax collectors and the sinners, we're talking about Jesus, and we're talking about 
the Pharisees. So, Jesus is obviously going to be the father, and the two sons are going to be the Pharisees, the religious folk, and the sinners. Everybody with me so far? All right. So the story begins that if the, the sinners, that this younger son, that's going to be the sinner, right? So the younger son says, give me what's mine. I want to go do my own thing. That's the whole point. The sinners, the Pharisees looked at him and going, how can they, if Jesus is supposed to be so holy and he's doing all these miraculous things, how can he be wasting all of that goodness on people like them? And so the story starts by saying, hey, these sinners were just that, sinners. They were not perfect. They had done all kinds of things. Just like this younger son who says, give me what's mine. Give me my portion of blessing. Give me what you have for me. I'm going to take it. I'm going to go do what I want to do. So the younger son leaves the presence of the Lord. All right? So the younger son has left the presence of the Lord. The younger son, the sinners, they have gone out. They have done everything that they want to do. Good, bad, ugly, done who knows what, with who knows who, who knows where. They have done it all. And then what happens? Just like happens with all, all of us, you know? If you ever find yourself in a place of sin, it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. And then you look around and you're at a place you don't even know how you got there. And they realize. And Jesus makes drive this point home. Because these were Jewish people. The one thing they didn't do was have pork chops. They did not have pig feet. They didn't have bacon. They didn't have any honey baked ham. They just didn't have chitlins. They didn't have anything to do with the pig. That was like unclean. So they had none of that. And so Jesus drives the story home. He's saying, look at this. Some of these people have been in a place equivalent to an unclean place for the Jews. Not only were they keeping, not only were they keeping the pigs, they were working on a pig farm, which is not ritual and not clean. They also wanted to eat the pig food. Now you know you lower than low when you long to eat what the pig eat. <laughs> Anybody ever had to slop a pig? <laughs> Do you want to eat what the pig eat? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. You know, I did it a couple times. I had a little problem though. But see, as long as the pig was standing still, I was all right. If the pig decided he was going to run and squeal, well, that stuff went everywhere. Pig went one way, I went another way, and all that stuff went another way. To which the older folks said, well, how the pig going to eat now? I didn't care. I wasn't up for that. So, here is this younger son in his sin at this deep place, this dark place this unclean place with no hope, no opportunities. He's at a place, he's at rock bottom. And then he remembers the mercy of God. And then he remembers about a father who's rich, a father who's powerful, a father who has all these resources. He doesn't even think about coming back and being restored to a place of being a son anymore. He's just hungry for some mercy, hungry for some grace, and in the story, just hungry for food. So, this sinner, these sinners that are eating with Jesus, now, they make up a plan. They say, I'm going to go back, I'm going to say this, and all I want is to be one of the help, because at least I'll be restored, I'll be having kosher meals, I'll be back to where I need to be. So the son goes home. Now what has the father been doing every day? Probably every day. Dream. Father's been looking out for the son. Every day. Maybe it's a long road and he just keeps looking down this long road every day hoping to catch a glimpse of the son that just took his stuff and left. He doesn't want to come back to control him. He wants him to come back so that he can show him love and compassion. 
So there's the father, every day longing, finally looking down this road to see his son. And one day it happens. The son decides, on his way back, he gets close, and yet not so close. Because the old man, the father, takes off running, meets his son, who's been probably practicing the same line over and over and over again as he traveled from this distant, distant country to come home. Father, I've sinned against heaven. Now, Father, I've sinned against you. I'm not worthy to be called your son. And he finally says that several times a day because he doesn't want to miss this opportunity because he expects his father to be indifferent. He expects his father to be angry. He expects his father to be like you are no longer my son, whatever the case may be, but he was expecting some kind of confrontation. So he had a plan that said, I don't, want, I don't need to be your son anymore. I just need to have a job. Just give me a job. Now, the father comes out and embraces him. Now, if you're the son and you've done all of this, and you come home, and your father comes out and embraces you. How's that going to make you feel? Is it going to make you feel good? Is it going to make you feel special? Yes. But above all of that, is it going to make you feel loved? Yes. So that's where we are. The father says, hey, come on. We've been saving that calf. Go ahead. Kill it. Take a nice robe, put it on. Now he done gone on from being with the pigs to having a fancy ring and a fancy robe. He has now been restored to the son status that he had before he left. He was restored. Grace and mercy restored him. What's next? The party goes on. Now, now, this kind of goes on a little bit. Anybody ever been around? It takes a little while to, to, to dress an animal, doesn't it? It takes a little while. It takes a little while to cook that food, doesn't it? Which means that the older son was out in the field for quite a while. For all of this to happen, and then for that older son to come and hear the music and, and hear all the laughter and all the joy. And so now the older son, who's the Pharisee, What's his attitude? Huh? He said he got to go. So the oldest son is saying like, to the younger brother, you got to go, right? <laughs> what else? So the, younger, the older brother is angry. What else is he? Hurt. Hurt. How does he feel about, how does he feel about the father? Betrayed. Betrayed. That's a good one. He feels betrayed by the father. So what does he do? He's doing like... Like the Pharisees are saying in this, look who this, look who he is. These people are coming back from who knows where, doing who knows what, and he's sitting and he's accepting them as if they are part of who he is. It's because, like, if they are part of who we are as Jews, as if they are uh, the part of all that he is bringing into this world now. And yet the father comes out and he's even coming to them. The father even wants the Pharisees to understand about his grace and his mercy. And he goes to them and he says, son, come on in. Join the party. But the son says, no. See, I've been keeping the laws of Moses all these years. I, I've been teaching the law all these years. And this is what the Pharisees did. I am above all these other people. I've done all that you've asked me to do. And yet I never felt anything. Because they didn't know. They didn't want to accept Jesus for who Jesus really is. So, he says, come on in. The son says, no. This son of yours come back. These sinners have come back. And look at all you've done for them. And you've done nothing for me. The father says, come on in. 
brother was dead, named alive. He thought that he found. Interesting, isn't it? Because now we have this story that kind of leaves us. Does the older brother go in to the party? Does the father leave him soaking outside? What do you think? You think the older brother went in or was he still angry? Hmm. Think about that. I think the older brother stayed where he was. You know how I know that? It's because the Pharisees were grumbling. The Pharisees were angry that Jesus was accepting these people that were broken, bruised, and hurting. These people who were sinners by, according to this world. And Jesus was accepting them, offering them mercy, offering them grace. And yes, in the future, offering them a new life because of the cross. Today, our opportunity is to realize that sometimes we're on both sides of this equation. Sometimes we can be the sinner going our own way, doing our own thing, thinking that we got it all together and finding out down the road that we probably should have done it the Lord's way. Then sometimes we're the one going, Lord, how many times are you going to keep giving them a break? Lord, how many times are they going to keep coming and leaving the church? Lord, how many times are they going to keep doing this? Sometimes we find ourselves on both sides of this. Sometimes I look at this story and I'm going, I think there were two prodigals. I think there were two people who were, in their own way, had separated themselves from Jesus. The Pharisees had decided that they were more important than Jesus in his time because they were the keepers of the law. And as keepers of the law, they didn't need grace. Yet we know that the sinners, anybody been forgiven? Anybody had been restored? Anybody been some place that you really didn't understand how you were going to get out, how you were going to get back, and you knew you were wrong? I've been there. Only to find that the grace and mercy of Jesus can lift us up, restore us, and bring us into a new place to give us blessing upon blessing upon blessing. Not because we deserve him, but because of his grace, because of his mercy. Today, let's be, let's be cognizant, let's be thoughtful, let's be thinking about the fact that we are called to be loved. We are called to love, not judge. We're called to extend grace and love. We're called to bring peace and love. But above all that, we're called to love because Christ first loved us. Thank you for listening. Amen. Amen.